Hey guys, welcome back to yet another episode of Get Corporate Ready. In this video, what I'm going to be sharing with you is how do you best prepare for that new job? So for a lot of you that have been through my series, I've spoken through CVs, I've spoken through interview tips, and now when you've finally landed that dream job, do you not want to be making the right first impression? Stick with me through this video because I'll be taking you through some key steps that are really going to help you set the right tone as you start your new job. Hey guys, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Bukhali Bayila. I'm a young talent specialist using this platform to share information with all graduates and young professionals alike on how to get corporate ready. For those of you that have been with me, now I'm starting a new section that's really going to start talking about the transition into the world of work. We're going to be speaking through all different elements that have to do with corporate, how you show up and how you set the tone for what your career needs to be. And if this is the kind of information that you're interested in, smash that like button. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that every time I post a video, you'll be the first one to know. So today we're going to be speaking about what is the best way to show up for your new job. One of the first things you do is that the week before you start, there are a couple of questions that you need to be asking your HR person before you start the job, right? The first thing that you need to be asking is making sure you know exactly what time you need to be pitching up for work, right? So whether you are going into the office or whether you are logging on virtually, find out from HR what time do I need to be logged on or do I need to be at the office? Who is the person that I will be meeting upon arrival? Now, generally, when you come in, you don't know where you're supposed to go, where you're supposed to be seated, who, which team you're in, what you're supposed to be doing. So generally, there will be someone that is going to take you on day one and orient you into the day and show you where everything is in terms of setting you up on your laptop, making sure you know where your team is, where you'll be sitting, where your office desk is, all of those things. Someone needs to show you that on day one. So it's important for you to make sure that you are asking your HR person, what time do I need to be there? And who am I meeting upon arrival? So that as you step up to reception, you know exactly who you'll be asking for and that you are arriving on time. Next thing that's important to ask is what is the dress code, right? So for those of you that did interview in person, you will have gotten a sense if you've been in the building, how people are generally dressed. Is it really formal? Is it semi-casual? Is it a casual environment? And that will generally tell you how you need to be showing up on your first day of work. But if you're not sure and you've done a virtual meeting, make sure that you are asking that question as well. What is the dress code? Is it formal? What is the best way to be showing up on day one? Another thing you may not be aware of asking is where should I park on day one, right? So if you're driving into the office, it's important for you to understand where exactly should you park. Some office places have dedicated parking for employees, but because you are new and you don't know exactly where to park, there's generally a visitor's parking that's allocated for you. And that's where you park on day one until you've got all the necessary information and access cards to get into the employee parking section. So make sure you're also asking, where do I need to park on day one? One. Another thing that I think is important for you to be asking is what is the COVID protocol? Each business obviously has their own protocol around how they screen for different symptoms ahead of you entering the building. So make sure you understand what the COVID protocol is so that you are not bypassing any sort certain restrictions that you're supposed to be going through on day one. And if they require any information upfront so that they can load you onto the system, then that's the kind of information that they'll be able to share with you the week before you start. And lastly, one of the things that I also think is important for you to be asking is just understanding whether there's a restaurant, whether there are shops nearby, or whether you need to be packing your own lunch. Because I find sometimes people pitch up at work and maybe expect that they'll have something arranged for them or that there'll be food. And every, every business operates differently. Some have restaurants in-house that you need to kind of bring money to. Some have shops downstairs that you can buy food from. Um, but if you're not someone that has the cash to be able to be spending on day one like that, make sure that you've pre-packed lunch the day before and it's not something that delays you and that you're not caught off guard on day one, feeling super hungry, not having the money, not having packed any lunch and kind of wondering where to now, right? Now guys, that wraps up the questions that I think are important for you to be asking HR before you start your job. And that's what's gonna help you really be prepared for day one. 
As you arrive for day one, I think one thing that's always important for you to be bringing with you on your first day of work is a notebook and a pen. Why this is important is that generally when you started a new job, there's a lot of information that you need to be absorbing, right? As people are telling you where things are, how to navigate, who the different people are in your team, what your boss's name is, where they sit, where you're going to be sitting, where the restroom is. There's so much information that you need to be kind of absorbing on day one, right? So please make sure that as you start on day one, you come ready with a notebook and a pen so that you are jotting down as much information as possible. Do not rely on the fact that you will remember the information because you most likely won't, right? So make sure that you are arriving with a notebook and a pen on day one so that you are able to take as much information as possible. Now, one word of caution is that the first week of your new job can be very draining from day one onwards because there's so much happening and there's a lot to take in and it does feel a bit overwhelming at times. So one thing that's important for you to make sure that you are doing, make sure that you are hydrating yourself throughout the day, make sure that you've packed a fruit or an energy bar so that if you happen to go through a day where there's not a lot of time to be having a full lunch, you've got something that you can quickly snack on to make sure that you're concentrating fully throughout the first few days of week one. One thing that's definitely gonna be happening in week one is that you're gonna be meeting a lot of different people, right? So it's important that as you are the new employee within a department, within a company, that you create the best first impression that you can within that first week. As you meet people, it's important for you to always have a pleasant attitude, to make sure that you are giving them eye contact as you're speaking to them, that you're giving them a firm handshake as well, and that you come across lively, right? The last thing you want is to meet someone new and they're kind of speaking under their breath and saying, hi, yeah, I'm Bukhale. yeah, thanks, and then kind of looking away or whatever. That's not creating a great first impression. You need to be like, hi, my name is Bukhale. This is this is what I do in the company. It's so lovely to meet you, right? You need to bring that kind of energy because what you want to do is that as you meet new people, you want to leave a lasting impression of who you are. You want people remembering you in a positive light. And that's how you create a great first impression. So make sure that you're lively, make sure that you're always smiling, make sure you have eye contact and you're really someone that's engaging as you meet new people. It's going to be very difficult to remember everyone's names. So make sure that soon after you've met someone that you quickly jot down their name and who they are, what role they play, so that you always remember the names. It's a great way of really making people feel valued and making people feel like they are important to you. If the next time they meet you, you're addressing them by their name. One thing about names, some places are quite formal um, and senior people want to be addressed as Mr. So-and-so and Mrs. So-and-so, depending on what their surname is. And other places are quite casual, right? Some people are very happy for you to call them by their first name. Now, it's important for you that as you go through this first week, you are asking the relevant questions of the person that's guiding you and the people around you and your teammates, right? Making sure that you know what is the protocol, what do people like being addressed as in this place, so that as you go about learning people's names, you know whether they're comfortable being addressed first name or being addressed in a more formal manner. The next thing that's also important, don't be afraid to ask questions, right? So guys, don't go into a new environment and assume that people are gonna think I'm dumb if I don't know this, I can't ask this question. There's no stupid question, particularly in week one, right? There's so much that you need to absorb, there's things that you're going to forget. So it's important for you to feel very comfortable and quite confident to be able to ask certain questions. So make sure that you are raising your hand and asking the necessary questions so that you are able to at least understand what people have been telling you, be able to put different pieces together so that you have a full comprehensive view of what your role is, what the team does, where do I fit in, who are the key stakeholders. There's so much that you need to learn. So don't feel bad for asking questions because it's important for you to understand all the different pieces as you start your new career. But make sure that as you ask a question, right, you've thought through it first. You've gone through your notes to check whether this is something that has already been discussed or not. And if not, that you've thought through it first before you ask a question, right? So don't ask a very obvious question, ask something that for you hasn't been covered as yet, but is important for you to know for the purposes of the role that you're going to be in. Now, one thing that you'll find is that generally in week one, there's gaps of free time, right? Whether it's because IT is setting you up on your laptop and you actually don't have a laptop to work on, 
whether someone is still setting you up in your workspace most companies should have already set you up before you come in in terms of allocating you a particular workspace but if they haven't and they're still setting things up you are going to have quite a bit of free time particularly within the first week so make sure that in that free time you are not spending your time catching up on social media on your phone watching funny videos and laughing being on youtube guys make sure that when you are at work you spend your time actually focusing on work and things that you have learned throughout that first week right so make sure that you're using your free time to go over some notes to orient yourself with some of the information that they've given you if you've got some time to go meet your co-workers or people that are around you Go out, meet with them, chat to them, find out what is it that they're doing. You need to be curious, right? In order for you to learn as much as you can about the role that you're in and the company that you work for, you need to learn to be curious. And curiosity really starts by going outside of your comfort zone and sparking some level of conversation and engaging with people around you that are really going to help you understand who's who, what do they do, how does that fit in, and also it helps you build a level of rapport, right? Building rapport is a very important element as you go throughout your career because you want to be known for something, and what is that thing that you're going to be known for? So make sure always that you set in the right tone as you meet with people, that you are really presenting yourself in a way that you want people to see you at work right so like i said guys make sure that your free time is not used on social media listening to music make sure that you are present all the time right because the more that you do that when people come in and it's your first week and they see that you are laughing at videos or on social media or listening to music can't even hear them calling you it just creates the wrong impression it creates the impression that this person is easily distracted, right? As soon as you kind of turn your back, they're going to be doing their own thing. They're going to be on their phone. So make sure that you look focused in the time that you're there. Make sure you look excited to be there. Make sure that you're engaging with the material or any training material that they give you in week one. That's what you use your free time for. Now, those are all the different things that you're most likely going to be experiencing in week one of starting a new job. But that's really some of the things that I've seen over time are really helpful in making sure that you're setting the right tone and you're creating a great first impression. Now, final bonus tip. This is really not something that is a must, but really is a nice touch. Um, one thing that you could definitely do at the end of week one, so on that Friday maybe of your first week, is really just send a few short emails to people you've met throughout the week to really thank them for making you feel welcome, right? I know it's something that is not necessarily a must have, but it's really something that will set a really nice tone um, in terms of building that relationship with people that you're going to be working with, whether it's just to your team members, whether it's to the HR person that's really orientated you throughout that week, and maybe some two or three key stakeholders that you know you need to be building relationships with. If you've met them throughout your week one, make sure to send them a nice, kind little note. Thank you so much for welcoming me into the company. I really look forward to working with you right? Something really small is a nice touch and really sets the tone. Guys, I hope you liked that and there's so much more information to come. If you've enjoyed this video, like I said, make sure that you're giving it a thumbs up, that you're pressing subscribe and the notification bell so that you always know when I'm posting the next video on how to get corporate ready.